Hello everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials. Please be sure to check the video description for our link to the new Sub That US mobile learning app that puts all of our tutorials and exclusive content and masterclasses right in the palm of your hand. It's free to download and those links are in the video description. If you're catching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of the tutorials that we release. Tonight's tutorial is on how to create this 3D puffy uh, image look that is very popular in the sublimation industry right now. So this design is so easy to put together and leverages your favorite SVG files or any of the shape tools or pen tool creations that you might wanna utilize in Affinity Designer alongside of a couple of effects. Everything we're gonna do today is able to be done in both version one and version two of Affinity Designer, but version two does offer a little shortcut that I will be showing you. So this is our completed design that we're gonna work on today. Uh, you can see the version not mocked up over here. Let's go ahead and get started. We are gonna start by opening up a new document. Now I'm planning on making this in a Tumblr design fashion. So I'm gonna open up a document that is sort of my universal Tumblr design size. If you're using the Mac version of Affinity Designer, you will select the new document function. And if you're using the Windows version, you will come to file and then choose new or new document. If you're in version one of Affinity Designer, your document panel is laid out a little bit differently you will find these um, options right here over in your right side panel, and you will find all of this sort of tiled in the middle. You can review some of our earlier videos from the last few years if you wanna see what that looks like in action. If you don't already have a preset size for a tumbler, you can create one by just entering in the measurements you would like under your layout tab, and then clicking the little plus sign that will appear um, so that you can choose your specific size. So if I just enter in a different measurement, you can see the plus sign here in version two. Um, you have the option to save that as well in version one so that you have different templates that you can work off of. So my default option or my default size for a tumbler design is 9.2 inches wide by 8.15 inches tall. I have found that this is pretty much the best universal size to make your designs and that it works almost always on tumblers. You just have to usually just have to trim it a little bit from the top and the bottom, not so much the width, um, but it tends to work pretty much across the board with all of the different types of 20 ounce tumblers. As always, you wanna make sure that your document is set to 300 DPI because that's the minimum resolution for sublimation printing and graphic design in general. And because we are creating for sublimation and we're creating a PNG file, we wanna have our color format set to that RGB slash eight with the color profile selected of the sRGBIEC 61966-2.1. This is a universal setting that everyone is going to use for the most part. This is the most current color profile for the RGB slash eight format. However, if you are using a Mac, you may find it advantageous to choose the older format which is the Adobe 1998 option. Again, that is specifically for Macs, usually Macs using a converted sublimation printer, not so much a Mac that's using um, a Sawgrass or one of the Epson Sure color printers that come with a RIP software and have far better color accuracy. So just some tips to keep in mind as you're setting up your design. When you have all of your settings ready, go ahead and click Create. Now, the first thing I wanna do is just add some type of a background for my tumbler, and so that when I put those other layers on top, they are going to have something to um, press against and create that 3D effect. So I'm gonna come over to my tools panel and I'm gonna select my rectangle shape tool. And I wanna make sure that my magnet icon is selected up in my tools panel. Uh, sorry, in my toolbar. This is your toolbar this is your tools panel. The magnet icon stands for our snapping guides and those allow us to see these red and green lines 
when we are at connecting with different points on our document or other layers. So start at the top left corner, make sure you see that red and green line and then drag diagonally across by pressing and holding on your mouse to the other corner until you see the red and green line again. You've fully covered your document at this point in time. Now you could make this any color that you would like, but the first thing I recommend is coming to your color panel and selecting that open circle and choosing no fill so that you don't have that default black line. I'm gonna give this sort of an orange color, not sort of, I'm going for an orange color because this is a Halloween vibe that we are working on. Next, I'm going to import some different SVG files. Now, in order to make this um, puffy 3D effect, you want to be working with vector layers. That's gonna give you the absolute best results. Now, you can do this by creating your own using your various shape tools or your pen tool, or you can do this by using some SVG clip art. This is such a great quick and easy tutorial to use some of those SVG elements that you might have or that you can access through sites like Creative Fabrica. Everything I'm using today did in fact come from Creative Fabrica and they are all linked in the video description. We're gonna come to File and Place or you can select this picture icon from your tool panel that says the Place tool and it's gonna open up our File Explorer. Now I did a few different ones down here. I'm gonna start with this trick or treat one and we are looking for either the EPS or the SVG file that is available. So I can see that there is a trick or treat EPS right here and also up here there's two different versions. We can just click on that and click okay. When you see the downward arrow with the portal, you know you are ready to be able to click and drag. I'm going to resize this how I would want um, just to get a good visual on my canvas. But one thing that you're going to notice is that when you bring in a what's considered a layered file like a PDF, an SVG, an EPS file, um, even an AI file, it is going to show it as an embedded document. You'll notice that right up here. So we actually want this layer in our um, canvas here so that we can play around with it and manipulate it how we want and we're limited a little bit because it is an embedded document. So anytime you see that embedded document you'll also see edit document. You can go ahead and click that. It's going to open up a new tab where you're going to see that layer and we can come right into this layers panel and we can actually select everything that is here and I'm going to right click and group that all together and then I'm going to copy and I'm going to bring it right back over here and I'm going to paste that. Now I can get rid of that embedded document file. We don't need that anymore. And you can even close out this other tab. Just make sure that you don't select the layer where it actually like says layer. Make sure you're selecting all of them in a group that's individual. So we can go ahead and um, click off of that. And then I'm just gonna resize this on my canvas sort of get it centered however I would like or however I think it looks best. I want this to be to be centered to like this point, not this little part of the K because uh, it actually is going to look more centered when we're centering it based on this eye line here versus that little extra part that extends out. So we are looking for our green line and our red line in the center. And then we're basically just gonna move over a little bit from the right or to the right to get it about where we would like. So I'm pretty happy with that. We could do it a little bit smaller if we wanted, but let's bring in some other elements and decide from there. So once again, we'll click that place image tool and come back to our downloads. And I have bats and ghosts and spider webs. So let's come to my spider web. And again, I'm looking for that EPS file or the SVG file. And I will click and drag to see what we've got. I'm gonna choose that edit document function again, select that curve layer, and I'm going to copy it and then just bring it back here. Now you can choose to simply open these in a new tab on their own by coming to file and open and selecting those files. So if we come to um, file and open here and then 
back down to our downloads. And let's say I wanted to come to the ghosts and I chose that ghost EPS file, it would automatically just open it right over here. So you can open two different ways. Um, it really just depends on what you're looking for. The main reason that I actually choose to do the place method and then the edit document is because sometimes I don't actually need the layer because I'm not going to do anything other than just have it there. And other times I don't know if I really want that. Like I could get this in place and then say, eh, I don't really like that. And when you still have that embedded document, you can actually just choose that replace document function and then you're able to just swap out something in its place. So you will discover your own fluidity in terms of how you create things and how you want your workflow to go as you get more familiar with using the software. So I like the spider web. I'm gonna just zoom out here and kind of line it up in the corner. You see it's hanging off of my canvas and I wanted it to look like it's touching my T and I do wanna make sure it is below my text layer here in my layers panel, which it is, so that it will appear behind it. So I'm going to right click on that spider web and duplicate, and then I'm going to bring the other one down towards the bottom and see if we can manage the same, the same effect here. So I'm going to zoom out so I get a little better view. Okay, perfect. That actually did um, fit right in there how I would like. Now, if you don't see your layer hanging off the edge or if you don't like seeing it hanging off your edge, come to view, view mode and select or deselect clip to canvas. When that is check marked, you can only see what's on your canvas, which does create a more distraction free zone for your creation. Now I also opened up these little ghosts and I would love to use these. They are all in their own individual curves. So I'm just going to select all of them. I'm not going to group them. I'm just going to copy them and then come back over here and select paste. And they are up here on top. Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't really matter where these are in the layers panel, but I am going to go ahead and select each one and just sort of move them around, resize it, however it works or fits. Maybe have him hanging off the page a little bit. You'll notice that I am absolutely not concerned with seamlessness. I think that that is just an unrealistic concern and I express that all the time in our group. Um, the reality is with tumblers that there are so many more variables to making them than worrying about whether your design is seamless. Because even when you have a seamless design, if you find yourself in a position where you have to actually trim your layer, then all of a sudden that seamless um, option isn't going to be there anymore. <laughs> you are literally going to have to um, reprint it at another size. And it's it's really just best practice to always print a little bit larger and trim it so you can get a nice fluid design, but not obsess over that seam. The seam does not matter. If you go to the store, there are tons of designs um, on cups that are not seamless by any stretch of the imagination. And that whole idea, that whole aesthetic is just an expectation that we as crafters have put on. So I generally don't even sell seamless designs. I have done thousands of tumblers and never printed a seamless design except for maybe one that was like already all black, but as a good rule of thumb, I don't stress about it. So I'm just trying to find a spot for this guy. There might not be a spot for him. He might just have to go. Maybe if we make him really small, we can kind of put him up here. All right, I like that. I like that it's creating a little bit of dimension by having some that are bigger and smaller. Creating dimension with our layers is something we talk about a lot in the Affinity Master Classes, which you can access with your subscription on our new SubThat mobile app. Uh, so definitely check that out and enjoy all of the fun tutorials and options that are available to you.
All right, so once you have all of your layers in place, it is time to create the effects on all of this. Now, to create that puffy look, we are just going to leverage the effects panel. This is labeled as either FX, effects, or quick FX, depending on which version of Affinity Designer you're using and also which, uh, which device that you're on. You can access this by clicking on your quick FX or effects tab, also by clicking the FX at the bottom of the layers panel. And if you don't see your, your FX or effects panel for some reason, if you're in version two of Affinity Designer, you're going to come to window and then come to, to or sorry, just come to window and look for that quick FX um, tab and make sure that it's check marked. If you are in version one, that option is gonna be under view and studio. So you'll come to view, you'll find studio, and then you'll see all of your panels. As long as it has a check mark next to it, it does exist and you should just look around for it if you don't see it. Now, let's go ahead and add some effects to our, we'll start with our spider web. So we're gonna come to that quick FX tab. And the first one that I wanna add is this bevel slash emboss option but we don't just want to check mark it. You can always just check mark stuff, but if you want to have the most uh, access to how to manipulate it, you're going to come to this little gear icon that says layer effects. That little option will pop out automatically if you choose the FX option at the bottom of the layers panel. So we have this selected and let's go ahead and do Let's do emboss. Let's kind of increase that radius. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. So you can see as you're increasing the radius, let's see if I can click off of that. Um, we are getting a highlight and a shadow. And this is designed to give us that look like this is in fact a 3D effect. Now, we can see that from our shadows, right? But the white and the black are not really working in our favor. They're like really strong. So we wanna just tweak that. We're gonna come back over here, click that gear icon again, and we can start by moving the direction of our light and see if we like the results a little bit better. Just by doing that, I actually do like the results a bit better. It's giving more of that puffy look that we're going for. You can also choose to, to um, increase the soften option to really just help soften that out. So you're still gonna get those lines that you want for that puffiness, but we've sort of diffused them a little bit. Now you can continue to spread this out a little bit more if you would like. And you can also change the color of those shadows and highlights right down here where it says highlight and shadow. So if we click on this, um, maybe white isn't quite what we're going for. Maybe we want to bring it to more of like a soft orange. So we'll bring this over in our orange area and bring it down. So we're still getting the white, but now we're also getting that orange. And you can see that we're getting that puffy 3D look. Now, if you're not in love with your um, the direction of your light, just come right on over here and move it around. The best way to navigate this really is to simply move it around and watch how it changes and then base your decision off of that because your version of puffy puffy uh, SVG looks might be different from mine or might be different from someone else's. So I find that I like this particular area because I think that this gives the most realistic of that puffy like look. So I'm sort of in the lower left quadrant, but not far off from like dead center is where I landed. So we're gonna go ahead and click on close. Now we've already got this set, so we don't have to go through that all over again on our other spider web if you're in version two. If you are in version two of Affinity Designer, you actually have the ability to click on where you see FX in your layers panel on a layer and just drag it to another layer and it will automatically apply it. So this is one of the cool functions of the version two of Affinity Designer. This option is not available in version one, unfortunately, but what you could do instead is simply 
start with that curve that you started with and right click and duplicate it and then put it in place where the other one was. So you have that option if you were in version one. And you can continue to drag that and go ahead and add it to your other layers. Now this doesn't mean that it's automatically ready to go. You might still need to tweak it some, but I recommend using this as your starting point and then working after that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that same, um, the same effects here that we've got to all of our layers and then sort of zoom out. Now, overall, I do like where this is going, but there's not enough puffiness happening. So I definitely need to make some adjustments. This might mean adding an additional FX besides just the, besides just the um, bevel slash emboss option. I think the bevel slash emboss was good for the spider webs because it's just thin lines. But I think that my ghost might benefit from also adding the 3D effect. So we can go ahead and click on that FX to pop it open. And then we can come down to the 3D option and select that. And then we can increase the radius on this to really help it be a bit puffier. And we can also adjust the direction of that light to see if that gives us more of the overall look that we're going for. Yes. So I just moved that down into let's see, the lower right half, pretty much at like oh, halfway through the lower, <laughs> that lower right half. And then when we click off of that, we can see like, do we love that? Do we not? I think it added just enough little extra oomph, but I still kind of feel like it's not strong enough with my bevel um, where it's indented here. So I'm gonna click back on that guy and I'm gonna click on that FX and let's see what happens when I increase the radius of this emboss or maybe try and decrease it. All right, decreasing it did not really work in my favor. So we're gonna go up a little bit more and maybe I will decrease the soften. Now, the reason why things don't really apply universally is because it, it depends on the layer itself. With the webbing lines, that was easy. With the ghosts, it's a little bit thicker, so we need to do a little bit more. So we're just going to tweak it. Again, maybe look at changing the direction of the light. And also, changing the direction of the light is just good so everything doesn't look quite so uniform. I didn't really change it a lot, but it has changed. Uh, it has changed subtly. You might also want to look at some of the other options here. Like, do you think pillow works better or an outer emboss versus an inner? So I actually really like the outer emboss here. And I think that with the 3D, the outer emboss actually works better for the ghost. Uh, it's definitely giving more of that indent look that I would like. So now that I'm happy with this ghost, I can actually choose to bring this FX to my other ghosts. And again, we're just literally just dragging it when you're in version two, you have that option. Um, unfortunately, you don't have that option in version one, but it is a great function. We still wanna double check and see if there's anything we wanna adjust. This ghost is pretty big, so I think that he will benefit from having a bit more um, 3D. So we just go ahead and I increase that up some. Great. I don't really think I need to soften it, but let's come to my bevel slash emboss and see if we can increase that radius some. Yes, I think increasing the radius a little bit and maybe increasing the soften is good just because that's a bigger ghost. That's basically the only reason we're adjusting it. And this guy, because he is off and see how our light is down, his light is completely lost. So we're going to go ahead and select him click on that FX and we'll start by just playing around with the light and seeing if we can give more of the look that we want here. Okay, that was good. Um, let's switch him over to pillow. Okay, I like pillow a little bit better for him. And we're gonna increase this. and adjust that radius. His shadow is coming through a bit more, but that is okay. 
we can try and adjust our light just a little bit more and see if that will help. But I think because we're using the pillow one, it's not really going to invert the same way that we would like it to. Either way, we still have a nice puffy look. This guy could be a little bit puffier. We can try switching him to pillow as well. Between the pillow and the outer, there isn't the biggest difference. It's really just going to depend more on the size of your layer and the placement of your layer. Because as you can see, as we're swapping between them, it doesn't always... See, it doesn't really look the same, <laughs> and that can be its own problem. We can try adjusting the lighting on this guy as well. Okay. I definitely think that that gave me a much better 3D kind of look. And then our last one is this trick or treat. And we can see here that... Um, we are getting the puffiness, but it's really close to looking like it's actually indented. And maybe that's the look you want to go for. Maybe you want to go for something that looks like it's more indented than it is popping out. Um, but if not, you're going to want to open up that layer and play around with your different bevel slash emboss options. Basically between outer emboss and pillow is what we're looking at. And then also consider doing the 3D option and seeing how you feel about that. Now for this text, I don't love the 3D because I think it's conflicting with the bevel slash emboss. We can try and come to that and change the option. Maybe change it over to pillow, but see how we're getting like this double line that's happening from the, um, from the option we're choosing. But now the outer emboss definitely gives us a bit more of that indented look. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to increase that radius some, so it has a little bit of a more depth. I'm gonna decrease my soften range some. Mm, actually, I might increase it just a little bit. We decreased it a little bit from what it was, and then we can again choose to adjust the light. Now you want to stay a little bit closer to the middle when we're doing the bevel slash emboss because notice when we go way out to the edges, we're not really getting that sharpness of the lines that we want. So I'm back in that lower right quadrant and I'm pretty happy with that wondering, let's see if we just increase the radius some. Oops, we selected off of our guy. No, I guess the radius is okay. So we've used our SVG, SVG layers or EPS layers to create this puffy version. And now from here, I would say um, you can go ahead and add in any fine details that will just kind of help this whole thing really pucker up. That might just be like little stars using your star tool. Um, maybe you want to add some more spider webs or bats, uh, something that is smaller and off in the distance and that you might even consider making it not black in this case, but changing the color. Changing the color alone can really make a difference in how the overall design comes together. So if we come to our spider web curb, for example, and let's say that we go with that orange that we used, now we're getting this um, this like indented look that almost looks like it is like the stitching that was already in there. And I actually really love that. And it makes me wonder like, oh, how would this look like on a bigger scale? I don't love that as much, but you might find that you love something a little bit more like that. Um, you can also choose to just give this a little bit of a darker tone than or a lighter tone than what your base layer is. So. I'm already set to the tone. If I just come over here on my color wheel and drag my pointer just a little bit and maybe move this over just a hair, notice the change that we got. So you can see what it looks like with black. You can see what it looks like with this. I actually really prefer the black, but I think that using this combination would be great just to add some additional texture into the back here. Whether I want that to be just like some stars to create some puckering or you know more additional lines whatever it might be 
So you can go ahead and add those in to create your finished results. I'm gonna move this back to black because I was happiest with that. And you'll find your um, shape tools like your star tool right over here in your tools panel. So if we were to grab the double star tool perhaps, and then we'll go ahead and um, resize that. You'll notice that you have this little, two little red dots here. You can literally drag these in and out. So if I sort of put that like that, let's give it that darker orange color and let's bring my FX from my spider web up to that. I like the effect, but I don't like the effect. So we're gonna click on that FX and we're gonna go ahead and tweak it. So first things first is we definitely need less soften and less radius because this is a smaller element. So we don't need quite as much um, in your face. And the second is that we want to adjust our lighting some. And I'm also thinking that we might be better with either outer or pillow for this one. I think I like the pillow the most. What's inner look like? No, I definitely like the pillow option the most. And what happens if we add the 3D? I don't love the 3D. I think that it makes it puff up too much and I'm more I'm looking for it to more look like it's indented than I am for it to look puffed up. So I'm gonna see how I feel about increasing that radius some. There we go, just to give it a little bit more of that effect. And I will soften it some because it's a bit too strong. Okay. And we can sort of decrease the size. I'm gonna undo that for a second. And when you're under that FX panel, you wanna make sure you check that option that says scale with object. That way when you do resize it, you don't have a disproportionate of the effect that you've added. So we wanna sort of keep that in line. And now I can just sort of add these around. Maybe I wanna do some bigger, maybe I wanna do some smaller. But when I zoom out, I really like how that is coming together for my puffy design. So I'm just going to duplicate that, bring a couple over here. Again, I might do some small, I might do some big, do some clustered together. Oops. you will find that you really just have to play around with stuff like this and decide, you know, where you want them, where you don't want them. So I'll get just a couple more in here. Now I want that, currently it's over top of my text, I want that to be behind my text. So I'm gonna drag it down in my layers panel so that it is underneath that group. And I'm just gonna smush it a little bit, rotate it some. And I'll grab some of this little guy, duplicate him and bring that down here. Always make sure to take a moment to rotate them. I know that something like a star sort of looks the same no matter what, but a little rotation can always go a long way. Maybe we'll make an even smaller one in there. And maybe a little small one in here. And I think just like one more of these down in here would be good. Maybe slightly bigger. And there you have it. You have a puffy design for your tumblers. So you can do this again with any SVG files. That is gonna give you the best results or any vector base layers that you create, whether that is with your shape tools or your pen tool. We have tons of tutorials that show you how to use um, these different tools in different manners. So definitely check them out in the sub that mobile app. The link for that is in the video description. So the last thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure to go to file and save as to save your affinity formatted file. This is your source file or your working document. 
this is what you'll come back to when you want to make edits or changes um, or anything like that. When you're ready to export it so that you can actually have a PNG file, whether to sell or to print, you're going to do that by coming to export and then simply making sure you select PNG from this drop down and clicking the export button. You don't need to change anything. Um, that is all that you will do and you will have your PNG file to use for mockups or printing or selling whatever it is that you would like. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of your day.